Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Israelites, as we review end time prophecy recorded in the authorized Bible, it's very important that you understand the signs of the times. As the end time generation witnessing a lot of prophecy coming to pass, we must know where we are in our journey to redemption. The Most High made a covenant with Adam and Eve to deliver them and their seed at the end of the world. Then will I in mercy save thy soul and the soul of the righteous to give them rest in my garden. And that shall be when the end of the world is come. The promise the Most High made to Adam and Eve to save them at the end of the world. The Satans have taken this covenant promise to make false promises to people that was not given salvation in the religion called Christianity. The Most High made a covenant to save Adam, Eve, and the righteous of their children only. Adam's children are made to be in paradise, the Garden of Eden. The other species of mankind that walk this earth was not given salvation. They are not the creation of the Most High. The other species of mankind was created through lust and sin. The children that was created through the angels and the daughters of men was judged. Majority of them was killed while others made an appearance throughout the generations. Today we live among the remnant of the children of the angels. To the Israelites and indigenous black people that consider all race of people on this earth the same, that is false. We live among hybrids. There are people that appear human and they are not human. We even entertain angels unaware. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. The children of the fallen angels wanted to live an eternal life. Their fathers, the watchers, prayed and petitioned the Most High on the behalf of their children. All of the requests made by their fathers was denied. The Most High granted the other species of mankind 500 years to live. After that, they would be bound in the valley of the earth for 70 generations until their final judgment. And no request that they, their fathers, make of thee shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf. For they hope to live an eternal life, and that each one of them will live 500 years. And when their sons have slain one another, and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for 70 generations in the valley of the earth, till the day of their judgment and of their consummation, till the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated. In those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire and to the torment and the prison in which they shall be confined forever. As you have heard in the scripture from the book of Enoch, the giants petitioned the Most High and their fathers petitioned the Most High. All of their requests was denied. Religion has a way of making everyone believe they have a chance at salvation. Salvation for all is one of Satan's lies to deceive Adam's descendants into seeking religion for salvation. Satan deceived the seed of Adam into following him through religion. Throughout history and today, black people by the majority is the most religious group of people on this earth. Since I am a diaspora Israelite, I can speak on the Israelites that live in the diaspora. We are known as descendants of slaves. Religion is a generational curse on the Israelites in the diaspora. 99.9% .9 of us was born into a super religious family. Christianity being the most popular faith pushed on our ancestors during chattel slavery. Our ancestors transferred the Christian faith to their children. 
most of us before our awakening called ourselves Christians because that was our parents' faith. Unfortunately, Christianity in all forms of religion is not of the most high. Religion have a form of godliness, but they deny everything about the most high. This is why we have to turn away from religion and return to the most high. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. We are the generation commanded to serve the father in the spirit and in truth. The only way to do that, we have to look within. The Holy Spirit that abide in us would tell us everything we need to know. By the way, religion is witchcraft and idolatry. Israelites, you don't need to join a religion to establish a personal relationship with the Most High. You don't have to be a part of a religion to find salvation. You don't have to become a member of a church to receive the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of the Most High is within you. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or Lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Remember, you're the temple that housed the Spirit of the Most High. You don't have to be a part of any religious organization to hear from the Most High. Religion and spirituality are two different things. As you heard in the scriptures, the other species of mankind was not given salvation. Nor did the Most High granted salvation to the fallen angels that rebelled. The other species of mankind didn't find forgiveness of sins. Did you hear that, Israelites? Let me repeat that. The other species of mankind did not find forgiveness of sins. Enoch, thou scribe of righteousness, go, declare to the watchers of heaven who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, and have done as the children of earth do, and have taken unto themselves wives. Ye have wrought great destruction on the earth, and ye shall have no peace, nor forgiveness of sin, inasmuch as they delight themselves in their children. The murder of their beloved ones shall they see, and over the destruction of their children shall they lament, and shall make supplication unto eternity, but mercy and peace shall ye not attain. And they besought me to draw up a petition for them, that they might find forgiveness, and to read their petition in the presence of the Lord of heaven. For from thenceforward they could not speak with him, nor lift up their eyes to heaven for shame of their sins, for which they had been condemned. Forgiveness of sins was made available to the seed of Adam only. The renewing of your mind is important if you want to understand the deep things of the Most High. You cannot compare the deep things of the Most High with religious doctrines. The word of the Most High should have the final say in everything you accept and welcome as truth. The words of the Most High is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Another judgment that was put on the other species of mankind was that they would become evil spirits on the earth. The Most High said in the book of Enoch that the children of the fallen angels was half flesh and half spirit. They couldn't live in the heavens. The Most High made the earth their dwelling place. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth and on the earth shall be their dwelling. The spirits of the other species of mankind dwell on this earth. Not only do we live among the fallen angels, but we're also living amongst the evil spirits of the other species of mankind. Israelites and indigenous black people, we're living in a very dark place. Our environment is very evil. When you know the truth, the truth can explain the root cause to the diabolical things that takes place on this earth. The scriptures went on to say that the evil spirits of the other species of mankind will cause destruction on the earth. They will cause many offenses and rise against the seed of Adam because they come from us. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses, and these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. Israelites and indigenous black people, this is why it's important to stick to your own kind. 
When you go lusting after strange flesh, you don't know what you're sleeping with. The descendants to the other species of mankind continue to live today because the indigenous black people continue to procreate with hybrids and people that don't look like them. In black people's culture today, a great majority believe other groups of people make better partners than the woman or men created by the most high to be their counterpart. The scriptures in the book of Enoch inform us that the spirits of the fallen angels can take many forms on the earth and they are defiling mankind and they cause many people to serve demons as gods. And Uriel said to me, here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. Israelites, I hope you can now see how the earth is in the hands of the wicked. The beast culture have deceived Adam and Eve in this generation into believing the Most High made a mistake. A great majority of indigenous black people believe becoming one with the other groups of people that don't look like them and have enmity towards them is better than being with each other. Satan continued to deceive the seed of Adam today with the spirit of rejection. Not all who look human are human. There's hybrids among us. The time have come for you to understand that there are invisible entities around us that the eyes of the flesh cannot see. Don't use the carnal mind to understand what is spiritual. Satan exists as well as his hosts and the evil spirits of the other species of mankind. The book of Jubilees revealed to us how Shem, Ham, and Japheth complained to their father Noah about the evil spirits of the other species of mankind afflicting their children. And in the third week of this jubilee, the unclean demons began to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah and to make to err and destroy them. And the sons of Noah came to Noah their father, and they told him concerning the demons which were leading astray and blinding and slaying his sons' sons. The book of Jubilees confirm what the book of Enoch said about the spirits of the other species of mankind tormenting the seed of Adam. The book of Jubilees let us know that the Most High bound 90% of the evil spirits from the other species of mankind due to Noah's prayers. The prince over the evil spirits, Mastema, asked the Most High to allow some of those spirits to remain on the earth to chastise the seed of Adam. And he prayed before the Lord his God and said, God of the spirits of all flesh, who has shown mercy unto me, and has saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood, and has not caused me to perish as thou didst the sons of perdition. For thy grace has been great towards me, and great has been thy mercy to my soul. Let thy grace be lifted up upon my sons, and let not wicked spirits rule over them, lest they should destroy them from the earth. But do thou bless me and my sons, that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth. And thou knowest how thy watchers, the fathers of these spirits, acted in my day. And as for these spirits which are living, imprison them and hold them fast in a place of condemnation. And let them not bring destruction on the sons of thy servant, my God. For these are malignant and created in order to destroy And the chief of the spirits, Mastema, came and said, Lord, creator, let some of them remain before me and let them hearken to my voice and do all that I shall say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. For these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment. For great is the wickedness of the sons of men. And he said, Let the tenth part of them remain before him, and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. According to multiple scriptures written in the book of Enoch and Jubilees, the children of the fallen angels are evil spirits on the earth. The ten percent that remain on the earth, they are there to cause trouble. There is no salvation for the other species of mankind, as well as their fathers, the watchers, Satan and his hosts. None of their requests was granted for them. The seed of the fallen and the Satans have been judged. 
This earth where we dwell is the temporary realm the Most High created to send Satan and his hosts when they denounce the Most High. When our father Adam and mother Eve listened to Satan, they too were sent here. Yet if thou hadst submitted and had been obedient to me and have kept my word, thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guests among his angels that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. Because Adam and Eve repented, salvation was given to them. Israelites, you need to understand that salvation cannot be given to people who don't repent of their sins. Cain, the firstborn son of Adam and Eve, if he repented of his sins, the Most High would have forgiven him. His seed would have continued on the earth. Because Cain was hard-hearted and full of pride, he never repented of his sins. That is why his seed no longer exists on the earth. For if Cain had repented at the time and had said, O oh God, forgive me my sin and the murder of my brother, God would then have forgiven him his sin. The seed of Adam are not natural inhabitants of this earth. We are living on earth because that is where the most high placed Adam and Eve when they believed Satan. Adam and Eve became subject to Satan. Since this is where the most high sent Satan when he fell, all who follow Satan and believe his lies dwell on this earth as well. Paradise or the Garden of Eden is the home to the indigenous black people. Salvation that is heavily preached in religion is for the righteous seed of Adam that repented. The story in the authorized Bible about salvation is about the seed of Adam's redemption. The Satans have taken our journey to redemption, transform our salvation into religion. Since the Most High judged Satan and his host, as well as the other species of mankind, the only group that remain to obtain salvation is the people the Most High created in his image and likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Over the years, the synagogue of Satan took the promises the Most High made to Adam and his seed, altered the promises, inserted their lies into the authorized Bible. The workers of iniquity can't say everything in the authorized Bible is the word of the most high because they have altered the words. That is why they called it authorized to let us know it was revised by the workers of iniquity who translated the sacred writings. Israelites, the writings in the authorized Bible is not the original scrolls from our ancestors. The synagogue of Satan has the original text hidden in their secret vaults. You need the Holy Spirit to fill in the blanks and to point out the alterations in the authorized Bible. If you read the authorized Bible without the Holy Spirit, you will find many contradictions and confusion. The Most High, the Father, is not the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. It's really important for you to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. Israelites, I hope the scriptures clear up for you that salvation is not for all people, but for the righteous seed of Adam that repented. The seed of the fallen and all the other created creatures of the Most High that fell were judged. As we review the end time prophecies in the authorized Bible, make sure to ask the Most High to help you understand his words, as well as to be able to discern the times we're living in. Religion have brought confusion to the words of the Most High. Due to religious doctrines, many groups of people believe they are the chosen people. If they don't believe they are the chosen people, they are led to believe they are spiritual Israel. Religious doctrines truly set up the people for failure. I can see why the Gentile heathens and the other species of mankind want to be the Israelites so bad. Salvation is for the righteous seed of Adam only. Also, the nations who allowed the Satans to destroy the earth was judged. The day of the Lord is when the Gentile heathens will be judged for all their sins. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Religion have so many people believing they are safe. Israelites, this is why it's important for you to use discernment. 
You don't want to mistakenly reject truth that is sent into the world by the Most High for Satan's falsehoods. The time have come for you to dig deeper with the Most High. Stop relying on other people for answers when you get stuck. Learn to wait on the Most High. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. So far, you know that the great tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble. The persecution that will come on the Israelites will test and purify their hearts. Also, the Most High will use the time of Jacob's trouble to purge the rebels from among his people. The Most High did say all the sinners of his people will die by the sword. At the end of the tribulation, when the Most High redeemed his people to place them back on their land, only the Israelites and the righteous seed of Adam, whose name is written in the book, will be delivered. When Michael stands up at the end of the tribulation, he will only redeem the people whose name is written in the book. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. During the time of the Great Tribulation, many people will worship the beast, everyone whose name is not written in the book. The book of Revelation also prophesied of the judgment upon all the people who worship the beast and have the mark of the beast. If Michael will only gather the people whose name is written in the book, that means the Israelites who never repented will be left behind if they're not killed during the time of the Great Tribulation. The scriptures also inform us that when Michael stands up, not only will it be the day of our redemption, all whose name is written in the book. The scripture said that the dead will rise, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Many of us spent many years in the pagan church listening to the doctrines of when Jesus returned, the dead will rise and those who are alive will be caught up with him to go to heaven. When you let the scriptures speak, it say Michael will stand up to deliver our people and all the righteous. When he does, the people who passed away and buried in the earth will awake. Israelites, do you see how Satan twists the words of the Most High in religion? The workers of iniquity replace Michael with Jesus. The scripture said when Michael deliver our people, the dead that will awake will be judged. The scripture says some will inherit eternal life while others will inherit eternal contempt. Soon after the great tribulation, the judgment seat of the Messiah will take place. The scripture said we all have to stand before the judgment seat of the Messiah. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Right after the great tribulation is the day of the Lord. The Most High through the word of God and his angels will fight with the kings of the earth. Blood will be shed on the day of the Lord. The Gentile heathens will be recompensed for all they have done. The righteous Israelites will be gathered and put back on their land. Remember, only the people whose name is written in the book will be gathered. The Gentiles and all people who was on the broad road that leads to destruction will be gathered to the valley of Jehoshaphat. This is where the Most High would judge the heathens for how they treated the Israelites and for parting his land. Also at the valley of Jehoshaphat, the righteous will receive their rewards. The people alive at the time when Michael returns and the people that will awake when Michael deliver our people. The scripture said some will awake to eternal life and some to shame and eternal contempt. Everyone will receive their rewards according to their works. The judgment seat of the Messiah will happen when Michael deliver us at the end of the great tribulation. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed. But they cannot recompense thee. 
for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. The Messiah said in the book of Luke that at the resurrection of the just, we would be recompensed for our good deed, which confirm what is written in the book of Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. The dead will rise, some to everlasting life and some to eternal contempt. The book of Joel in the authorized Bible said, when the Most High gather his people to put them back on their land, we are going to be back on our land. We are not going to heaven. You learned last week, the heavens is for the inhabitants of the heavens, the angels. The Messiah's millennial reign will be here on this earth. The Messiah will rule from Jerusalem. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. The Most High will also gather all nations to bring them to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There he will judge the nations. The scripture said there will be multitude upon multitudes in the valley of decisions. A lot will happen at the end of the great tribulation and to the start of the day of the Lord. During those times, we all have to appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah. It wouldn't make sense for the dead that will rise when Michael deliver us to go to heaven. The Messiah's millennial reign will be here on earth. Israelites, don't let religious doctrines deceive you. If the Messiah is returning, that means he's returning here to earth. The Messiah is already in the heavens, which is why he has to return. The Messiah said that when he returned, he's not coming empty handed. The Messiah said in the book of Revelation, his rewards will be with him. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. The Messiah will give his rewards according to our works. In the scriptures in the book of Corinthians, it said that we all will receive our rewards regardless if our works was good or bad. A lot will take place in the valley of Jehoshaphat. Immediately after the great tribulation and the start of the day of the Lord, we have to stand before the judgment seat of the Messiah. The righteous will receive their rewards. The wicked will reap what they sow. They will inherit everlasting shame and contempt. The Israelites that did the will of the Father, those who repented and believed the Messiah, everyone who did good works will receive their rewards. If we go back into the book of Daniel, around the time when Michael stands up, verse 3 in chapter 12 said that those who taught and helped turn many to righteousness will shine bright. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. The righteous will receive the rewards for all of their good works. The wicked Israelites and Gentiles that believe Satan and chose the beast culture and depend on the Messiah that came in his own name to take their sins away instead of repenting, they will receive their rewards for their works. The scripture said the dead that will rise that was sleeping in the earth, some will suffer the fate of eternal shame and contempt, while some will inherit eternal life. As for the Gentile heathens, they will reap what they sow. All the Gentile heathens that were leaders in the slave trade conspired against us to keep us in captivity. All of these Gentile heathens that participated in buying and selling the Israelites in the slave market. The scripture said the Most High will sell their children. You truly do reap what you sow. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters 
into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off, for the Lord hath spoken it. All the Gentile heathens who made sure we remain captives, they created a system with the Satans that made sure we never prosper, giving us high interest loans and redlining. All the Gentiles who participated in keeping us at the bottom to remain last, they will become last while we become first. All the Gentile heathens who own ships to lead us into captivity, they will receive their punishments. They will go into captivity at the judgment seat of the Messiah. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Israelites, I hope you understand the Most High when he said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. The scriptures are clear in the authorized Bible. You will reap from what you sow. If you sow evil deeds, you will reap evil deeds. As you have done, it shall be done unto you. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Everyone will receive their rewards according to their works. If you sow terrible seeds, you will reap terrible seeds when you have to stand before the judgment seat of the Messiah. Israelites, it's very important that you make sure the Most High is satisfied with the work you have done for his kingdom. The Most High didn't wake you up for no reason. You have work to do. Don't rely on the Messiah that came in his own name to do all the work for you. You truly have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If the Most High put in your heart for you to do something for his kingdom, do it with great joy and with a pure heart. Don't sow seed that will cause you to receive shame and contempt in eternity. The strangers that truly serve the God of Israel with a pure heart, they will also be judged and receive their rewards according to their works. All the strangers that will assist the Israelites to return to their land, during Jacob's time to reign, they will be servants to the Israelites according to the scriptures in the book of Isaiah. The strangers will join the Israelites when they are gathered to their own land. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. The strangers will join the Israelites on their land when the Most High gather us to put us back on our land after the Great Tribulation. The scriptures went on to say that we will possess them in our land. Religion teach that we would be raptured away to heaven. We are not going to heaven. We are going to our land. The strangers who genuinely love the Most High will cleave to the Israelites. The Israelites will rule over their oppressors. Today, every nation and tongue of people oppress the Israelites. No Gentile nation is exempt from oppressing the Israelites. All the Gentiles conspired together under one consent. They were confederate against us. During Jacob's reign, after the day of the Lord, we will rule over our oppressors. Presently, we are everyone's captives. During Jacob's reign, the heathens will become our captives. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. When Jacob reigned, our rulership would be in righteousness. The word of God will reign for a thousand years. Although the Gentile heathens transformed us into slaves and treated us badly, during our reign, it won't be the same. The day of the Lord will recompense all who did us wrong. The strangers that cleave, they would dwell among us just like many strangers that dwell among the Israelites in the past that served the Most High. Remember, the Most High loved the strangers that serve him in the spirit and in truth. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. The strangers are individuals from the Gentile nations that serve the God of Israel. They are also Adam's descendants. The population of the strangers is very small. 
A lot of Gentiles who are descendants of Adam are deceiving to accepting the God of this world as their Lord and Savior. That is why the population to the strangers are small. Remember, there's only a remnant. Israelites, in order for Jacob to reign in the coming kingdom, there must be other people to reign over. Some people believe it will be Israelites only during Jacob's reign. That is not true. The nations will continue to exist. They have to serve the terms to the judgment they receive from the valley of Jehoshaphat. Everyone will know their fate at the judgment seat of the Messiah. Once the Messiah war with the kings of the earth during the day of the Lord, the people who was first will become last. So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. The terms to the Gentiles' judgment have to be served, just like how we are serving the terms to our judgments. Satan, who deceived the whole world, he has to serve the terms to his judgment as well. The scriptures let us know that Satan will be judged. He will be bound for a thousand years. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. When Satan is bound, he won't be around to deceive the nations anymore. That is how we will have peace during the Messiah's millennial reign. The Gentile nations will continue to exist. We will go deeper into the nations in the Messiah's millennial reign in part two. In the meantime, Israelites, be encouraged. Don't let the Satans discourage you from the increase of lawlessness in the end times. The Gentiles are doing exactly what they are supposed to do in the times of the Gentiles. As a people being afflicted, we have to endure until our redemption comes. There's a lot more that needs to be known about the Messiah's millennial reign. Stay tuned for part two. O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up. Be not afraid, say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God, behold. The Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young.